Hello, I'm Boone and welcome to episode 11, season 11 of The Impossible Dream with the mighty Scunthorpe United, The Iron. As always, thanks for joining me. I really do appreciate it. You know I do. If you feel generous, do all the good stuff. You know what that is by now. Uh, but most of all, thank you for your view. Now, oh, this week's been a graft. Every spare minute I've had, an extra. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, say, oh, poor Boone, but I have grafted my ass off this week. A little sleep. I'll be honest with you, because I really, I really, really wanted you to get two episodes um, because I'm going away this weekend. As soon as I finish filming this, I'm going to the caravan in East Yorkshire for a good few days. Um, but I'm going to take the laptop with me. I'm going to edit it and get it out. The internet connection's a bit turd, but I will get it out over the weekend at some point and play a bit. But relax and play a bit. I don't know when episode 12 will be out. There should be an episode 12, um, but I'm just going to recharge my batteries because even for me who loves this game I'm sick of it in that space bar I'm sick of looking at the screen I've had enough <laughs> I've had enough so hopefully this season's a good one it might cheer me up you never know because there's lots to get through so let's get into it we're going to actually start the episode at the very end of episode 10 um, with this famous man the guy we picked up for 300 grand compensation who had to sit out a year until he got his work permit um, and then had a really good season to be fair, he was decent, his average rating was okay, he created, he contributed, but he moaned all year. And I mean, imagine that in real life you've got a player who's obviously quality saying, I want to leave because you lot are shit. Because that is basically what he was saying, I want to play with a better level of player, alright? Now we know he's got a minimum fee of 7.75 million, and it was just in the head of that, and no one kind of matched it, we rolled our luck. But you know, the time was always going to come. But there was something I missed. His minimum fee was for domestic clubs only. Because in the summer, European teams started to come in. And the first one came in and offered me 12 million. And I'm like, why are you offering me 12 million? You can get it for 7.75. Oh no, you can't. Oh no, you can't. So I created a little bit of a bidding war. I started saying no. And then they came back. And then they came back. And then I said, yeah. And we sold him for 18.5 million to Inter Milan. There was a few teams coming in for him. Um, the big three, though, that were really going for it were Juventus, Inter and AC Milan. He ended up going to Inter Milan for 18 and a half million. Now, I also decided to sell Richard Vitek, who's a good player. He's gone to Celta for 4.4. Uh, Brazzini, decent midfielder, got a bit of money for him. Bogard's gone as well. Braithwaite, my backup keeper. So, you know... I felt like, you know, let's get a bit out. We've got 23 and a half million quid. And I decided to spend a little bit. I brought in a winger called David Thompson. We'll have a look at him in a minute. But then I used the Jibbo money because he actually played the first game of the season in the league. And then I'm pretty sure he played in the Carabao Cup. And then he went. Um, so I started to look and I found him at Southampton. Ian Vidozevic. Right? Bargain. Decent player. Very good player. He's not a Jibbo. But, but I was very happy with that. And I was pretty happy with the business I've done. Now, you see a lot of players have come in, um, but I think there's only seven in the first team. I decided to loan two just as squad fillers, not as actual first teamers. And I, I've also signed a lot of half-decent youngsters for the youth team because it's work for me now. Signing them, it helps that team. They've, win, they've won loads of titles in under-18s. They've got great staff as well. But I, I sell them on. I've made a good few million quid from bringing them in and selling them on. So it's the first of September and the season has, of course, started. Um, but obviously little deals are going through but we're in a great place financially now some of you are probably going to think I'm mental you're probably going to think I'm mental but we could have been really well off financially because this I I was tempted Mr. Mathau Echeverri the Frenchman who we signed from Paris Saint-Germain 2 who played for them a lot he actually played for PSG six times fair play to the kid we got him on a free I could do with most of my players and he's very good right back centre half can weirdly play on the left wing if you need him to Fulham who are in our division really wanted him really wanted him you can see his max value is 23 million they offered their last bid they offered 31 million I'm like shall I do it but I had a quick look I didn't feel like I could replace him and I thought we've lost Jibbo I don't want to lose probably one of me if not my best defender, I don't want to. 
can always sell him next year. He's got three years left in his deal. Might get a little bit less. But he was tempting. Imagine that. So, loaned in two players just to flesh out the team a little bit. One was Jamie Parker. We loaned him from Southampton, who were in our division. And just to help out up front, we've loaned from Leeds United, Ed Malon. Malion, whatever. Uh, he's 25 years old. I mean, he was at Stuttgart last year. He's never really played much, but he's got a bit of potential. One of our new players who's going to be in the first team is Oli Percival. Now, he was a Tottenham player. He's been a, on loan at Millwall last season, died the year before, but Spurs released him, 23 years old. Again, a versatile player, left back, centre half. Next up, it's David Thompson, who was released by Leeds. I think he was on loan at Hearts last year. Now, I signed Dave as a backup to Jibbo, because just in case we ended up keeping him. Um, but I still think he's a good, decent player. He's got some decent attributes. Now, this is the man I signed um, to replace Jibbo. And I wanted someone who's got decent pace, um, good first touch, good technique, and a bit of flair. Um, obviously, he's not on Jibbo's level, but he's 21. He's Croatian. Now, Southampton bought him last year, and they were in the Premier League at the time. And he only played once for them. Now, he was up for sale, surplus of requirements, and... Um, and we got him at a decent price and knocked it right down. His value shot right up now, probably because he's got more years in his contract. I don't know, but I think he's really good, but he's got big shoes to fill. Next up is Paul Williams, um, one of my very oldest friends, who's not my friend anymore. We had a big fallout when I was, bloody hell, 20. Wow. We were friends from youth, um, and we had a big fallout in my early 20s, 20 years. I still, if I see him, we say hello, but we were like brothers for a very long time. Um, but we didn't call him Paul Williams. I might have told you this story. <laughs> His older brother, nickname was Willie. So when we were little kids, we said, you can't be called Willie. We're going to call you a bum. You're joking. And it stuck with him. To this day, he walks around. He's 44 years old. And people call him bum. Another player to help out in defence is Bo Elot. He's English and he's only 18. Um, when I signed him, the computer automatically stuck him in the under 18s. But I quite like his potential, so I'm going to put him in the first team and see what he can do. Right, game. I'm just going to say this to you, football manager. I'm not the best at saying names, right? But I expect names like this when I sign dudes from Europe. But these English lads with crazy ass names, why can't he be called Chris Smith? No, he's called Chris Kazazabanakiek or whatever the hell that is. What the hell is that? Now and then, I've got myself a new keeper who's really going to push this year. Obviously, I sold me back up. Um, and Earl's a decent keeper, but I think Stephen Davidson, very handsome man, isn't he? Stephen Davidson, uh, all six foot two of him. Look at him. Oh, it gives me tingles. <laughs> Let me know if you recognise him. Um, was ex City, he's been released by City, although he spent three years out on loan. One year at Blackburn, which I'm sure he loved, uh, then at West Brom, then at Sunderland. And now he's coming in, probably going to be my new number one. So I really feel like even though we've lost Jibbo, I've replaced him with a good player. We've brought in some good players. We have good players. Really felt like, you know what? We could get back in them playoffs. Bit of heartbreak, but maybe we just weren't ready. But when you look at some of the other lads, I feel like we're getting a team together now. My own team of good young players and managed to get rid of quite a few of the minimum fees and, and if any of the other minimum fees that ever matched will be rich enough to replace these lads I'm loving this save and I'm loving the process I am burnt out of it though this week's killed me I'm not going to lie I've really had to sacrifice with the hope that and the convincing to my wife that we're off for a good few days you know what I mean you can chill out build sandcastles go on walks but we'll be taking a laptop because kids got a bit early and she watches shit on the telly, even in a caravan. So I'll be like, I can just take my time next one. Anyway, anyway, let's look at him. So yeah, we've got Diara turning into a baller, my defensive midfielder, which that tactic is what I'm sticking with this year. Just going for that. Uh, Dylan Earl, who is a good keeper, but I think the new boy might be a touch better. Uh, Daniel Bolger, best 2.4 million we've ever spent. He's getting better and better and better. What a striker he is. Um, of course, we've got Matt James. Great left back. Love Matt James. Uh, Giovanni Billows. Is he the big guy? Yes. All six foot seven of him. Look at him. Man. Freaking mountain. Of course, you've seen Mr. Matthew. Uh, Louis Smiley. He's very smiley. Good little player. He's been here a while now, hasn't he? Um, David Thompson, you've seen. You've seen the new right winger. Joel Onube. Look at that. They're getting better, aren't they? Well, you may have noticed we've played four. I've drawn three. 
and won one, but we're in 10th, but it's a long way to go. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. While I'm here, let's just get this out of the way. It's the Calabell Cup. I thought, especially with the Calabell Cup, I don't care. I really don't need to go on a fluke run or a good run or whatever. I just want to concentrate on the league. Carabao Cup is a nothing to me right now. I do not care for you in an extra 50 grand. We don't need the money. We need to do well in the league. So I just picked a B team, basically, as much as I could. Give guys a game. You probably aren't going to be playing a lot. Um, and our bogey team, good old Carlisle, gave us a kick in. A quick look though, the bookies odds while we're here. Um, and we're in 13th according to the bookies. Sometimes I believe in this. Sometimes I think, do you know what? You're being a bit cheeky. Because, you know, we got to the playoffs last year. We have lost a good player, but I think we've replaced him with a really good a good player as well. He's, good, he's a good player. And added depth to this squad. And the core of it, my first team 11, I think, is really good. But obviously, you're always coming up against teams in this league every year. A fresh batch of three who have just been relegated, who have had a year in the Premier League with Premier League money and got Premier League players and haven't lost them all. I mean, don't get me wrong, Brentford look like they've been torn to shreds, but they're still the favourites. They're still going to have loads of quality. So let's just jump forward to the 1st of Jan, 2034, wowzers. Um, yeah. Third, Volga, great little player. Uh, Anthony Saini, when he's done, does a job. But third, Swansea at the top of the league. Wow, fair play to you. Um, where's Brentford at this time? Ninth. And there were the favourites. But um, third, 113, drawn seven, lost five. And we started brilliantly. You know, I won one and drawn three, but then I won my next four, beating Burnley, Norwich, Watford, and Southampton. They're good results, I think. And then we went a bit poo. You can see Stoke, Reading, Ipswich, Millwall, and Brighton. And then we went decent, beating Joe Page's Derby County away on the telly. I saw Joe crying his eyes out. Joey Page. Um, fantastic little run, got a bit sketchy recently. This is a squad arranged by average rating. Uh, you can see Daniel Bolger got 15, 14. Come on a few times as a sub as well. Ben Lyons has played up front quite a lot for me as well. Obviously Knox, Niggles, all that stuff. But we've got quite a bit of depth now. I feel like we're soldiering through. We're not perfect at all, but we're still punching. We're punching. Good good core of players now. I see some, I see some in them for now. We'll see. Um, but I'm very happy. Mr. Matthew wanted, he's a bit miffed. He's lost his trust in me. Although he's not put a transfer request in. And the money is dwindling. I'm not spending it on anything. Maybe it's just, you know, the wage budget's massively increased. When we first got to the championship, I don't know if you remember, it was our weekly wage 140, 145 grand a week. Obviously, it's, it's increased. I've given out new contracts. Good players want pay rises. Obviously, some of the players that have come in, you know, the wages have gone up, but you've, I expect that. If we want a challenge, we need to pay. Now then, I've jumped forward to the 1st of April and uh, look at the young team. I've got a great staff down there. I've helped out a lot with our staff, to be fair. My staff is amazing. I'm not going to bore you and show you that. Um, but I'm just really chuffed. And I never thought that we'd ever be able to do anything with them. And they're decent. There's some guys down there worth a bit of money, but... They've picked up some titles, but what about us and titles? <laughs> Look at this. We've just coming into it, coming into it. Second half of the season, things are clicking, man. And we are second now, it's getting close. And there's an actual chance we could win the league. There's an actual chance we could get automatic promotion. I think at the minimum, we'd be in the playoffs. The minimum. This is the 1st of April, there's still time to go. Um, we're second behind Reading. Swansea have dropped off. Brighton are there. Where's Brentford again? Still in ninth. Favourites apparently to win the league. Um, but we're only a point at this stage off the top. And I've lost the least amount of games in the league. But what about the FA Cup while we're here? Well, we're out of it. Um, beat Sheffield United. It's the FA Cup. I thought, you know what? We're doing quite well here. Let's go. No. Leicester. Drew 2-2 two, two away. Brilliant. Again, thinking, oh, get my our place. We might have a chance, but we didn't. It was only 1-0. Here's what it is. Bye bye FA Cup. Championship. That's all we need to concentrate on. And in the new year, we've been good. I mean, I've only lost two. Um, drawn four and won a ton. And recently, we've been very good. Four games, four clean sheets, uh, three wins and a draw. Again, I've, we've had some fantastic results against clubs who have just come from the Premier League or they've, they've not been far out or even if they've been in the Championship they're big clubs you know what I mean the Fulhams of this world and stuff like that this is a squad arranged by average rating and yeah my front three are pretty good Lions on the left um, Ian Vidosevic 
on the right and Bolger up top. Um, got goals in him, got good appearances in him. Very happy with him, very happy with a lot of him. Um, a lot of my players are starting to get wanted. There's a few moaning. You know, the usual, it's the usual every year. In the wrong role, I want to play a little bit more. It is what it is, but as a unit, They've been absolutely bloody brilliant. And the money's still in a good spot. Um, we're spending a bit, but you know, we're okay. We're okay. Um, and whatever happens at the end of this year, if I can sell a player for bloody 20, 30 million, wow, I could do a lot, a lot with that if that happens. But I'm hoping we don't bottle job this. I'm hoping some actual glory. Because we've been starved of it, really, for quite a while. So let's just have a little recap. On the journey so far, now we, we're getting close and we're becoming a team in the championship, a top-end team. It's, it's been a journey and I mean, it's gone on for a while. We started in the Vanarama North, which I won, got to the Vanarama National, we were in ninth. The next year we won it, so you know, it was a slow burner. Um, but then we got to League Two and we were fantastic, but I think at the time we were talking, a few of you said it, and I agree with you, I've, I've experienced it a lot myself. I don't think there's much difference there. And we didn't have, a, we had a pretty similar team, didn't we? But we just barged our way through, got a second. And there's a couple of years in League One, or eighth, seventh, and we won it. So you know what, three years in League One, and now we've had a, a 19th, close won it, we were pretty good. Um, an 11th, a fifth, What's it going to be this year? Well, look at this. Something special could happen here. Now, if you look at the top of the screen, you'll see we're still in second. A month on. A nearly a month on. It's 29th of April now. And we've just been brilliant. We've not stopped. We've not been beat. Drawn a couple. Cardiff, Norwich. We had some great victories against Barnsley, Coventry, Crew. Wow. Two games to go and we're second. But what's that league table looking like? Well, they're not bad. In fact, we're still in with a shout. We're still in with a shout of actually potentially winning it. Now, we're three points behind Reading. Um, obviously, we've got two games to go. We'll have to see what Reading can do. What can we do? But behind us as well, there's a lot going on now. All the playoffs have been secured. So we've got playoffs. Um, and if we end up in the playoffs, I might do something similar to the last episode. Um, but for now, I'm thinking Charlton at home. I, I don't know what to do. I think, like I always do, I might just live comment. I might jump in for replays and then trim things down depending on how much I've got I want to share with you. But again, I want to share this all with you. But I've really felt the strength in depth this year. I felt like I've got a bit more quality, more quality than I've ever had when I've needed it. Lots of flexibility when I've needed it. Uh, Lyons is um, ain't fully fit, unfortunately, for this game. Uh, Hernandez is suspended. They're my main left wingers. But, you know, there's other guys who can slot in there. The Asanis, the Smiley Mileys, um, even my freaking £30 million defender, if I want him to. Mathau, whatever his name is. So, welcome to Glanford Park against Charlton today. Um, our last home game of the season. The form we're in and the way Charlton have been this year, we should be winning this. And picking up three points. If I don't win it, if even if I draw this one, I think I'll be I'll be angry and I will give him a bollocking. So ready to play an Ipswich. Um where am I? Ipswich are down there in 20th, just above Charlton. Um, I mean that's the main game I want to concentrate on. But obviously the guys behind us are snapping at our heels, but as long as we do our job, we should be fine. Should be fine. Wait and see. You never know, do you? Because here come Charlton and they're gonna turn into freaking Prime, I thought it was going to be a penalty then. Prime Barcelona just to piss me off. Probably. This game can do that to you sometimes. Reading a winning 1-0. Um, and Plymouth. Brilliant. Good old Plymouth. Have nicked our automatic spot. We need a goal here. We need a goal. Um, I'll give him a little bit of a kick in at half time. I mean, we're missing Hernan and Hernandez of a Lions on the left. And oh! What signs are coming? Now with 20 odd minutes to go, I'm putting Lyons up from, he plays very well there, scores goals. And um, I know his fitness ain't 100%, but I just think, give him some minutes. Might help him. Ready in a 2 nil up. Christ, it might be a goal difference thing. I don't, I, right now I'm not thinking of a title. I don't think we can do that. I mean, 1 nil is a bit twitchy bummy, isn't it? Well, there you go. 1 nil, 10 nil, I don't care. We got three points. And the run continues. We haven't been beaten now since mid February. And we got beat off Watford. 1-0. Watford are in 16th, by the way. Um, wow. Here we go. 
So obviously their goal difference is better. Um, and they've been promoted, obviously. But, I mean, there's a slim chance if they get battered, right, and we batter someone, Sheffield United, who are in fifth. So, you know, it might not happen. I think we scored some goals against them, though. Do you know what? I'm pretty sure I put five past them. Yeah, we've done well, haven't we? 5 1 in the league and 3 1 in the FA Cup third round. So there's a chance. If we go back and we look at the next lot of games, obviously we've got Sheffield United away. Reading have got Barnsley. So maybe my dreams have been shattered there because Barnsley are in the bottom three. But we've also got to think about, you know, even Plymouth for Brighton. Someone could drag us into them playoffs if we ball us up against Sheffield United. So here we go. Wow. A lot of work has got us to this point. A point where we could be making Scunthorpe. Premier League team. As always, you never know what you're going to achieve. It's felt like way more of a slog and a harder graft than my Oldham series where I took Oldham from the non-league to the Premier League. But this has been fun and I love Oldham. I've got a connection to Oldham. So most of you know that story. Scunthorpe, I have no connection to. It was just a case of, wow, how are they going to be relegated? I saw them get relegated I think, and I couldn't believe it and decided, let's have a little go. Let's see where, where we can go, what we can do. Maybe do three seasons, you never know. It's getting back in the football league, but these things grow. And I really appreciate you guys who stick with these kind of series for this amount of time. You are my favorite subscribers, and I'm not just saying that, you know, you've pushed me on through in this, and the views do drop off, but I'm enjoying it. And if we're getting the Premier League, wow. Welcome to Bramall Lane. And have you seen who the manager is, Mr. Inzaghi? He was Derby manager a couple of years ago when we got beat by them, I think, in a live con, wasn't he? Getting about. Um, but yeah, same team apart from Hernandez is starting, he's fully fit, Lyons is still edging, but what a sub player he is. What's going to happen today? Can we secure automatic or is this episode going to go on forever in the playoffs? Let's find out. Right, come on, we need a big time performance here in Sheffield. Come on, lads. We've done them twice this year, I know we're away from home. We've been on such a good run. Not been beaten since February. Fantastic run. Just one game. Just one victory. If we win, we're in the Premier League. You just got to win. And you're in the Premier League. The Prem. You get pay rises galore. Some of them have mega freaking things in the contract. That if we get promoted, they double the freaking wage. Do you know what I mean? Prove to me as well that you might like, well, have a crack in the Prem. Do you know what I mean? I've got a defender who's apparently worth 30 million. I need a bulger goal. We need some standouts. I just need a win. Also, it would be nice if Fulham, who apparently had 30 million to buy my defender, do us a favour. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> Away at Plymouth. Who had a stint in the Premier League. That is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I've always wanted to do something with Plymouth. That might happen one day in the future. Always fancied it. Like club from Devon. You know what I mean? Why not? Playing green bit different um right come on let's do it let's do it here's williams now williams lofting it over trying to find bulger bulger oh bloody hell good effort actually but yeah i'd just like to go away on my nice break to the caravan in east yorkshire with the wife and kids it's going to be good weather apparently beaches building castles playing in the parks play a bit of football with the kids and then in my spare time relax glass of wine on the balcony of the caravan looking out at a lovely ocean Playing a little bit of football manager, a nice steady pace for a change, especially compared to the pace. I've done, I broke records this week. Spending my Premier League money. That's what I want to be doing. Right, come on, Hernandez to Newby. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Give it him back. Right, come on, pick him out, pick your man out. Pick that out. Pick that right out of the net. 1 0. Oh, come on. Right, right, right. Come on, Fulham. Come on, Fulham. You can do this. You can do it. And there's nothing against Plymouth. They just. The team that can stop us getting to the Premier League, really, aren't they? There's Sheffield United. Oh, did you did, did you did, 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 like a banana? Did you see the bend on that? Please follow him. Now that we're drawing, I really need a favour from the cottagers. Have you seen their new state of stand, by the way? It's pretty sweet, isn't it? Like, oh, 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 oh! Get in! That's what all the fans are thinking. Jibbo woo, jibbo woo. Fuck you, jibbo woo. Come on, let's put this game to bed. Look, you've got to admit there's times I love this game. You know I do. We also hate it as well. Even though you don't really hate it, it, it can just, it brings out every emotion sometimes. Because you put so much into it. You know what I mean? Oh, 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 this is perfect. They're going down to 10 men. It's half time. 
we're winning 2-1. They've got 10 men. They've been better though, apparently shot wise, but RXG's better. Right, right, right. So close, we're so close. I've just given him a confidence boost. Max Green, I said, I'm really happy with performance. Just keep it up. Keep it up. The assistant didn't want to say that. I think if I'd have gone with what he said, I'd have pissed him off. But maybe he was right and I was wrong. We'll find out over the next 45 minutes. Well done, 30 million pound defender. It's Jamesy on a yellow. I might mean, make some changes. I'm worried about going down to 10 men. He's the only man on a yellow. I want Lions to make an appearance. That'd be nice. Last game of the season. Percy Bell trying to find Bolger, but he's come through. We and in one on one. Oh! <laughs> Get in. Get in. This is awesome. Honestly, better than sex. It is. Although my wife is good at it. I'll tell you what, though. I need to watch myself this weekend away because, as you know, I've told you about my weight loss. Um, I was 18 and a half stone at Christmas. I'm now officially 16, exactly. I'm very close to being able to say I'm away 15 stone something. And that is my aim to be 15 minimum. We'll see how I feel, how I look. If I get really thin, I think if I drop under 15, it starts to look like I've got some muscle wasting disease because I'm allowed to turn back into a banky streak of piss. But I feel amazing. I feel brilliant. Um, but I really need to watch myself this weekend because, you know, oh, wait, that goal got disallowed, didn't it? I was so excited and happy, I hadn't noticed it got disallowed. But yeah, you're going to have ice creams, aren't we? But I'm hoping to do a bit of walking. It'll counterbalance the ice creams. Right, here's Newbie. Come on, lad. Gives it to Hernandez. What's he going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel quite excited. It's James Gore. Oh, there you go. He's taking that one off us. I'm saying this out loud. We are Premier League. That sense of achievement. Oh my God, we've done it. We've been great though. We've been great this year. And the back end, we've been fantastic. Only lost seven. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm pretty sure Fulham must have got... Fulham. Fulham beat them 2-0. Oh my God, that's even better. What am I going to do with all that? I don't know. We need to do a lot because we're going to struggle next year. But I'm well up for that. I can't wait. I can't wait. And I'm going to have all the time in the world to plan in my caravan. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. So I jump forward now to the 1st of June and I cannot stop smiling. Uh, Brighton beat Plymouth 1-0 in the playoff final. But I can't believe I'm saying this. Whose place are we taking in the Premier League? Oh, the first thing I've noticed is Dirty Liverpool have won the league. City got second and United who have been brilliant on this save. They're normally all right, but they've been very good and uh, finished third. But it's West Brom, Forest and Hull that are coming down. We're taking their place. Oh, yes. Well, there we go. That is the end of season 11, episode 11. And as always, thank you for everything you do. But most of all, thank you for your view. If you feel generous, yeah. do all the other good stuff. But honestly, you who are watching this right now, yes, you, you know it's you I'm talking to. Thank you for supporting it all the way through. I never knew where this was going to go. You don't know where you're going to end up. But we're in the Premier League and we've done it together. And there's some legs left in this series. Even if I get battered every single game next year, I don't care. I'm going to really enjoy hopefully putting the squad together and seeing what challenges lay ahead because they're big ass challenges. Oh, can't stop smiling. Absolutely buzzing. Buzzing. A little breakaway from enjoyable football manager, a leisurely pace. I need that. I need that. I'll be honest. But anyway, I hope you're happy. I hope you're safe. I hope you look forward to episode 12, which I have no idea when it's going to come out, but it will come out one day. I promise you. See you later.